iDropper and other tools. Hi guys, today we are going to talk about the iDropper and other tools that are also included in this group. We have already talked about this tool, but today we will discuss it in more detail. As you know, the iDropper tool takes a color sample, so that you can use it later in your work. And let's look at settings. I have already taken the iDropper tool and we need to go to the top menu. The first thing we see, there is the sample size. That is, we can take a sample either in point format, and in this case the sample will be taken literally from one pixel that you choose. Well, for example, now I click somewhere here and I take this color. Or for example here. But there is some probability that if you take a sample of some area where a lot of colors are mixed, you can choose some random pixel and it will not be exactly the same color which in your perception is associated with that area. Therefore, it is useful to set the sample size in a certain number of pixels, among which the eyedropper will choose the average color. Often, the choice of 5 by 5 pixels is optimal. Let's install it. I also want to draw your attention that if you press left mouse button and start moving the eyedropper, then the color that is being selected at this moment will be displayed in the upper part of this circle. And this way you can choose exactly the color that suits you the most. And the color which is displayed at the bottom is the background color. If I hold down Alt when using the eyedropper, then look, I choose not foreground color, but the background color. If we continue to move the eyedropper over the image, we will see that, just as in the previous case, the upper part of the circle changes its color. But now it's the background color. Sometimes it is convenient to choose two colors at once, which you need in your work. For example, it can be convenient when drawing. And now I have created a new layer. I will take the brush tool and try to use these two colors. I can switch between them by pressing X key or use this arrow. Let's choose a hard brush. Although, of course, as you like it better, let's choose its size. And on a new clean layer, I will paint this spot with the foreground color. For example, let's make a sketch like this. Since we have a picture in this style, we will not paint over very carefully, but just outline the color. And now I want to switch between colors. I press X. Well, something like that. So, choosing the colors of the foreground and background, I can already use the shades of my image and add this color to all the details I need. Let's go back to the eyedropper tool settings. We have the option to select a sample either from the current layer or from other layers. If you choose all layers and you now click on the place that is transparent on the active layer, then the color will change. You see, the color sample is taken from the bottom layer. Although these areas on our active layer are now transparent. And so you can switch in this menu and choose the way of sampling that you find more convenient. The option show sampling ring can be turned off and then you will not have this ring. Look, I'm using the eyedropper, but I don't have any ring. Of course, it is better to turn it on, because it helps you to choose the color more preciously. Let's look at other tools of this group. Next we have the 3D material eyedropper tool, but we will talk about it in detail when we go through 3D images. Let's look at the color sampler tool for now. What does it do? In the previous cases we could take, in fact, only two samples of color. Sometimes we need more samples for complex projects. You can take up to 10 samples if you have a Photoshop CC or later version. In earlier versions only four samples can be taken. How does it work? Let's open a panel called Info. Here it is. And now the sample that we take will appear here. So for example I click somewhere here. And look, I have a sample number one and the numbers that correspond to this color of the RGB color model are already installed here, because it's active right now. We take the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and so on. I have 10 colors. That's it. It is no longer possible to take more than 10. And how can this be useful to me? Well, first of all, we can click on this arrow and choose which color model we want to use instead of the RGB color model. For example, I can choose SMIC. Now it is SMIC. For example, I want to find an analog of this color in the SMIC color model. If I am doing some kind of work that will be in the SMIC model and it will be printed, 
I need an exact sample that exactly the analog of this color. Then there are the values of the SMIC color model. Go back to RGB and move on. And look, we can move the samples here. And at the same time, data on these colors is changing. So for example, now I have taken mesh number 5. And my values were changing just opposite this standard. As soon as I let it go, these numbers change in the window 5. That is, I can rearrange them somehow. I can also click the right mouse button. And also, I can right click and delete. So, I deleted this sample. At the same time, of course, the numbering has shifted. Well, let's see how I can use it specifically. For example, I'm interested in the color that I have. Well, let's choose number 2. Here are the color values. And I want to reproduce this color. The color panel opens. And we said, OK, this color has become my foreground color. And I can use it to paint something else. So, let's move on to this layer. Maybe this is not the best choice. But let it be so. Of course, I would like there to be a lighter color. If we no longer need the markers that we have chosen, that we have installed, then we can of course delete them all at once. If we select delete in the top menu, delete it. And we can create new values of color standards and use them in our work. The next tool in this group is the ruler tool, which we can use to measure various lengths and angles. For example, I have already taken this tool. And I want to measure the length I put the first point and without releasing the mouse button, I stretch the entire length. And so, in the top menu, we have values corresponding just to the length. This is width and this is height. This refers to the horizontal width and vertical height. Next comes the angle of inclination relative to the horizontal. And there is just the total length of this particular line in millimeters. We can also measure the angle. To do this, I press Alt. I draw one line and draw the second. And here in the upper corner we see an angle. In order to clear our document from the lines we have drawn, we select clear. Before using the next function of this tool, we will combine the layers. I press the keyboard shortcut Ctrl plus E. This keyboard shortcut combines the layer with the layer that is below. And now we will use the ruler tool to draw a line along once again. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that the parameters we talked about are also reflected in the info panel. Perhaps it will be much more convenient for you to look at them there. Similarly, the width and height horizontally and vertically, the angle and the total length of this line. But now we will choose to straighten layer and see what happened. That is, the line has become parallel to the line of the canvas, the bottom line of our image. And that's what we got as a result. Photoshop is such an interesting program in which the same action can be done in different ways. And now you know different options for straightening the horizon line. Because last time we did it in a completely different way. That's how the range of your choice is gradually expanding when making a particular operation. And we will return the image to its previous form and look at the following tool. And it will be the node tool. We choose it. So we have it. What is it for? With this tool, you can create such small nodes directly in your document. For example, a customer called you and said that you need to fix something, and you decided to make a note in the document, so as not to forget and not to get confused. Or you want to set yourself a task for the next session of your work. You have stopped at something. You are afraid of losing a thought, and you need to fix this thought somehow. I click again now. I have a note like this. At the same time, a window like this opens. In the upper window, I can specify the author of this comment. This is necessary so that if several people are working on this project and everyone leaves some kind of comment, then to make it clear who left it, I can type a name. You can also choose a color for every note. But we have a yellow one. Let it remain that way. And now you can close it. Let's say I decided to look at the contents of this note after a while. I click on it and click here. There may be several nodes. I create another one. We can select and choose the one that we need right now. If you right click, you can delete either a separate comment after completing the task or delete all comments. I will delete one comment. And if you need to delete everything, you can also use the buttons in the top menu and delete everything. The next tool that we will look at is the count tool. 
This is a very simple tool that allows you to count some objects in your image. For example, you may have some kind of complex architectural structure and you need to count some elements, so as not to keep all these numbers in mind. You can just click on the objects that you count, for example, the first one, but it's not visible because of the color, let's make it darker. The second object, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and so on, as much as you need. It is such a convenient tool. Then we can clear our document of these figures. Select clear and the numbers disappear. Well, we have finished studying the tools of the eyedropper group and your homework will be to try to take different samples for the foreground and background, create color standards and color objects of this image, try to measure different distances and angles, count various objects and leave some note in your file. And it's all for today. It was Peter Romanov and AIM School. See you next time.